No homework tonight yet for chapter one, section two. Um, probably later on this afternoon, I'll post a, a homework assignment. We're gonna start trying to use the WebAssign because I believe I have resolved everyone's problems. So what you're going to be doing is, even though you're going to do your homework on WebAssign, what you're gonna still need to do is show your work. So you're either gonna do your work on a piece of paper or on Notability. Then after you enter your answers on WebAssign and you click Submit to get your grade, you're gonna take a picture of that grade and put the picture into the file that has your work. And then you will submit that file with your work and your grade to Canvas. Remember, once we start WebAssign, the homework is now based on accuracy. I'll probably set it up so you'll have more than one attempt to get the 100. Um, but again, it's based on a rubric. You don't need to get 100 on the WebAssign. As long as you score 80 or higher, it would be 100 that I would enter on Canvas. So we'll play with this tomorrow. Today, all we're gonna do is go through the notes and then I'll practice, I'm gonna be putting up a web assigned homework and we can um, play around with that tomorrow um, once the freshmen that are here on campus return to class and they'll be physically in the classroom here. All right, so everybody find the notes. Let's go ahead and go through these notes on chapter one, section two. Now, also keep in mind that you have access to your textbook through WebAssign. So if you notice, we're starting with section two. If you wish to read through section one, um, it's something, it's uh, prerequisite knowledge that you should know. So if you um, want to read through section one, you can do that. We're not gonna test you on it, but it is knowledge you should already have. Um, and again, also, you can always read your textbook um, if you wanted to see more examples than what I'm doing here in class for the notes. So let's go ahead and see what section two is all about. So what we're going to be doing is solving equations. Our goal is to isolate the variable on one side of the equal sign. We are gonna have special cases, and those two special cases will be when the left and the right side are exactly equal, then that would produce an answer that is all real numbers. So it wouldn't matter what the value of x is, it would always make the equation true. Then the other special case is when the variable cancels out and what's left is a false statement. It's nonsense, maybe it's two equals five. Then the answer will be no solution. So we're either gonna get an, an exact value of x, like x equals two, we're either gonna get all real numbers or no solution. And we're gonna see all of these as I go through the examples. So here is my first example. Probably when you learn this in Algebra 1, they probably called it like a two-step equation because it's involving two inverse operations to solve. Remember when we solve for variables, we're working backwards of order of operations, so I'm gonna add or subtract first. So I'm going to be adding six to both sides. That will make that cancel out. And now I'm left with 3x equals 6, divide both sides by 3, and I find out that x equals 2. Now remember, whenever you're solving for a variable, you can always check your answer by taking what x equals and plugging it back into the original. So if I did a check here, and if I rewrote my original, and now if I take out x, put in what I think x is, and it's a two, three times two is six, six minus six is zero, so I did get the correct answer because when I plugged it in, it worked. So this is one way that you can check your answers. You can plug them back into the original problem. 
if you did not get a true statement here, then you knew that you did something wrong and you need to go back and rework your problem. Let's try the next one. So again, remember our goal here is to isolate the variable. So I need to get my x's on one side of the equal sign and then my constants on the other. Now it doesn't matter if I move my letters to the left or my letters to the right. So for this particular problem, I'm gonna move my letters left. So I'm gonna move the three x over to the left by subtracting it from the right side. And then I'm left with two x plus four equals negative eight. Now, when you're doing this homework, I need to see all of this work and how you're showing these properties of equality and doing the same thing to both sides of the equal sign. No work, no credit. So I need to see work for these. I know some of them might be simple, but you still need to show the work. Now I need to do one more step here, or two more steps. My next step is to get the constants together. So I'm going to subtract four from both sides. And then I'm left with two X equals negative 12. And then my last step is to divide both sides by two giving me x equals negative six. Now, if you preferred to move the four first and the three x um, second, you could have switched up the order of that. So you can either choose to move your constants first or your variables, it doesn't matter on that. But you do have to divide last on this one. So again, I could take it and plug it in. If I get a true statement, then I know I've done it correctly. Now it doesn't always have to equal zero. So for example, if I plug this one in, let me rewrite the problem over here. 5x plus four equals three x minus eight. Again, if I take out x here and here, and I replace it with the negative six, I'm doing five times negative six plus four and three times negative six minus eight. Five times negative six is negative 30. Three times negative six is negative 18. When I subtract negative 30 plus four or negative 30 plus four, I get negative 26. And when I add negative 18 minus eight, I get negative 26. So because this is true, negative 26 does equal negative 26. I know my solution here of negative six is the correct answer. Let's try number three. Now, when you're doing your work for your homework, you don't need to show me this check, but you do need to show me all of this red over here. So you will need to show me this part, but you don't have to show the check. That's for yourself. All right, number three. Now, these are sometimes tricky because at first you're thinking, oh, it's a subtraction equation, I need to add to solve. But again, remember your goal is to isolate this x. So I need to get this seven to the other side. And if I add seven, I'm gonna get a 14. So instead, I need to subtract seven. Because remember, you're trying to get rid of that seven. And then now this negative x drops down and then 19 minus seven is 12, I can never leave a negative variable, so I can assume a one is there, so it's a negative one, so then I divide both sides by negative one, giving me x equals negative 12. Let's try the next one. Again, here is my two-step equation. I'm going to subtract two first from both sides. And now I'm left with seven X equals 21, divide by seven and X equals three. So these simple two steps were probably things you did in pre-algebra and in algebra one. Let's try number five. Some of them will get more complicated, but again, this lesson is algebra one. So this is still a review. Um, 
you know, they will get a little bit more complicated though. So again, my goal is to get the variables together and get the constants together. So I'm gonna to add 2x. Now, you could also choose to subtract the five, but I'm gonna move this over so my variable is positive. And now I'm going to subtract three and seven x equals three divide by seven and x equals three over seven. So sometimes our numbers aren't gonna divide evenly. They might not be pretty whole numbers or integers. Um, they could be fractions. Let's try number seven. Again, my goal is to get the x by itself. So I need to move the seven first. It's gone from the left. The negative two x drops down and then 15 minus seven is eight. And now I divide by negative two and x equals negative four. Again, at any point, if you're uncertain about what you've done, remember you can always plug in the variable um, value back into the original equation. Same thing, we need to get our variables together and we need to get our constants together. So I'm gonna move the 5x to the left by subtracting it. I'm left with 2x minus nine equals seven. I then will add nine. 2x equals 16, divide by two, and x equals eight. Now the next one's a little different. However, all I'm doing first is distributing and then I combine like terms and then begin to move things together. So I'm gonna distribute the six first. I get six X minus six, drop down the plus four, distribute the three. And now I can begin combining my like terms. Now, you can choose to always move your variable to the left. However, I could also move my variable to the right. So let's say I didn't wanna get a negative variable. I could move the six to the other side. You're still gonna get the same answer in the end. Now, one other thing I should have probably done, let me do that first. Let me combine my like terms first. It doesn't matter but it just makes the problem a little simpler. I'm gonna combine these like terms first and get six X minus two equals 21 X plus three. Now I'm gonna move my six X. And again, if you would prefer to move the 21, you could subtract it also. So negative two equals 15 X plus three I now need to move the three. And now I'm at negative five equals negative, uh, positive 15 X. Let me go ahead and write it so it's not so crammed in there. I now need to still isolate X, so I need to divide both sides by 15. You're always dividing by the number that's next to the variable. 15 divided by 15 is one, so you're left with x is equal to negative five over 15. Always reduce your fraction. I can reduce this by dividing them both by five and make it x equals negative one-third. If you wrote your answer as negative one over three, these are the same thing exactly the same thing on number nine. We're gonna distribute first, then combine our like terms, and then begin moving our variables in our numbers. So I'm gonna distribute the four first. I get four X plus eight minus 12, 
5 times x, 5 times 6, so negative 30. I now can combine these two like terms and get 4x minus 4 equals 5x minus 30. And now I'll begin to move my variables together. Now, let's just, I just want to show you that you could move the 5x. It's okay to get a negative variable, or you could move the 4. It doesn't really matter. So negative 1x minus 4 equals negative 30. Then I'm going to move the 4. And now I have negative 1x equals negative 26. Again, I can never, ever leave a negative variable. So I have to divide by negative 1. And then that gives me positive 26. If you would have moved the 4 to the right, then you wouldn't have had a negative x. It would have been positive. So for the next one, again, I have to distribute. 3 to the 2x gives me 6x. 3 to the negative 4. Now, on this one, see this subtraction sign? What you've got to remember is you're subtracting both the x and the 5. Or you can think of this as being a negative 1 here that you're going to distribute. So it's going to become 7 minus x minus 5. Or you could also think of it as keep flip change. So now I'm going to combine my like terms here. I'm going to do 7 minus 5 and get 2 minus x. This side I'm going to drop down. And now I'm going to move my x's together. And I get 6x plus 1x is 7x. Then I'm going to move my 12. 7x equals 14. Let me go ahead and write it up here. And now divide by 7. And x equals 2. I'm going to distribute first. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8x. 4 times 1 is 4. Again, Either do it like I did before and distribute a negative 1, or you can turn it into a keep flip change. So then now I have 6 minus 2x plus 4. Combine your like terms. So I get 10 minus 2x. This side drops down. And now I begin to move my variables together. So I can move the 2 over, or you could move the 8 over. It doesn't matter. I get negative 6x plus 4 equals 10. Subtract the 4. Negative 6x equals 6. Divide by negative 6. And x equals negative 1. Now, they get a little bit more complicated here. We've got some fractions to deal with. Now, on this one, I could distribute the 1 fifth and get 2 fifths x and make it 1. I could do it that way, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to clear the fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by a 5. You can do 5 over 1 if you want to see it that way. This gets rid of this 1 fifth, and now I'm left with 2x plus 5. But over here, the 5 needs to distribute. And now I'm going to do the same thing to get rid of the 3. Multiply both sides by that denominator. It cancels it from here. And now I'm left with 6x plus 15 equals 5x plus 10. Now I have a problem similar to what I did at the beginning. So now I'll move the 5x. 
x plus 15 equals 10. Move the 15. And x equals negative 5. Now, if you would have preferred to distribute the 1 fifth, you can also do that. Either way. So for number 13, instead of trying to subtract 1 fourth x from both sides and then that other fraction, I am going to multiply all four of my fractions by the common denominator. So my common denominator between 3, 2, and 4 is going to be 12. Now, this is where the simplifying diagonally is going to be very important. So I'm going to multiply everything by 12. So this one by a 12, this one by a 12, this one by a 12, and this one by a 12. Now what I'm going to do is get rid of the denominators. So 12 divided by 3 is 4, and that's what I distribute. So this becomes 8x plus 16. Next, I'm going to simplify the 2 and the 12. This becomes a 6. 6 times 1 gives me 6x. Then I'm going to do the same thing here to the 1 fourth. This simplifies to a 3. So this becomes a 3x. And then same thing to the very last one. And then that one becomes a 4. And 4 times 7 is 28. Now I can combine my like terms. So I have like terms here with the 8x and the 6x. So I'll add those, and that's going to give me 14x plus 16 equals 3x minus 28. I'm now going to move my x's together by subtracting 3x, and then I get 11x plus 16 equals negative 28. Subtract the 16. And now I get 11x equals negative 44. Write it up here. And now I'll divide by 11. And x equals negative 4. So after all those crazy fractions at the beginning, our answer is actually an integer and not a fraction. So I'm going to convert my decimal here to a fraction. And I know everybody hates fractions, but this is a reasonable fraction. It's one fourth. So let's go ahead and convert two thirds plus one fourth x equals x plus two. If you try to convert two thirds to a decimal, it'll give you a repeating decimal. And you really don't want to convert that and deal with a repeating decimal. So here it's better to leave them as a fraction. Next, I'm going to find a common denominator between 3 and 4, and it's going to be 12. So what I'm going to do here is multiply my entire equation by a 12. So this one by a 12, this one by a 12, this one by a 12, and this one by 12. So again, I'm going to simplify diagonally. This will simplify to a 4, so 4 times 2, and I get 8x. Then same thing here, simplify the 4 and the 12. This becomes a 3, so now I have a 3x. And then next one, I just multiply 12 times x and 12 times 2. Let me go ahead and move it so I have more room. So I'm going to do 8x plus 3x equals 12x plus 24. I'm going to combine my like terms. And now I'm going to move my x's together. I get negative 1x equals 24. Divide by negative 1 and x equals negative 24. 
the next one, I need to simplify what's in the bracket first and then begin combining stuff. So I'm gonna simplify what's in the bracket. I can either treat that as a negative one here or again, do a key flip change. So if I do a key flip change, this becomes negative, this becomes positive. So let me rewrite that. So I now have two X minus three plus X plus five. I now need to combine like terms in the bracket. So 2x plus 1x is 3x. And then add my constants. So negative 3 plus 5 is 2. I'm going to put the bracket back up. And now I'm going to distribute 4 to the 3x, 4 to the 2. And now I can, can, can begin to combine my x's. I'm going to add 7x. 19x plus 3 plus 8 equals negative 2. Move the 8. 19x equals negative 10. Divide by 19. And x equals negative 10 over 19. If you want to just put the negative sign out front, either answer is acceptable. So again, they can be crazy fractions as answers. They don't always have to be integers. The next examples I'm going to do are the special cases. And we're going to either get all real numbers or no solution on these. Let's go ahead and try these. So again, I need to distribute first. Negative 2x minus 8 plus 3x equals x minus 8. I need to combine my like terms. This gives me x minus 8 equals x minus 8. As soon as you see that you have identical things on both sides of the equal sign, this is going to be all real numbers. Now you can either write out the words all real numbers, or if you want to abbreviate and use the number sign. This symbol here, if you make a capital R and then you put another stick down, this is also the symbol for all real numbers. Now let's say you didn't catch that and you kept on working without paying attention and you decide, I'm gonna add eight, then you get x equals x, and here, this is also still a true statement, and even if you divided, um, or even tried to subtract, let's see if we even just subtract x's, even if I try to minus x from both sides, I get zero equals zero, which is a true statement. Or if, even if you said I have to divide one by one, um, you still get x equals x. So this is a true statement. Zero does equal zero. So this is all real numbers. Let's try 17. Same thing. 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times negative 1, negative 3. Now notice at this point, when I try to group my variables... Notice the variables cancel, and you're now left with negative 3 equals 7. This will never, ever happen. So when this occurs, the answer is the 0 with the slash, which represents the words no solution. So you can either write the 0 with the slash as your answer or type out the words no solution. So when you're left with something that is not a true statement, it's false, the answer is no solution. I'll try two more. We're going to distribute negative 12x minus 6, negative 3x plus 12. Nothing to distribute here, so let me just rewrite it. I need to go back and add my x's. 
So I get negative 15x, add my constants, plus 6, and then I have it equaling the negative 15x plus 1. If I try to group my x's, I get 6 is equal to 1, which is nonsense, so no solution here. If you would have moved the numbers, um, then you would have seen the same thing. So it doesn't really matter. As Soon as you get something that's not a true statement, you're gonna say that the answer is no solution. We have one more special case. Now in this case, instead of getting rid of the fraction, I can see that both of these are divisible by two, so I'm just gonna distribute it on this one. If these were odd numbers, I would probably multiply both sides of my equation by a two. But this I'm just gonna distribute. I get three x plus seven. Over here I have to distribute the two. Combine my like terms over here. One x and two x is three x. And one plus six is seven. As Soon as you drop down this side, you can see it's the same, so this is all real numbers. If you didn't realize that, you could try moving. And again, you can see that this is still the same. This was the same. You could try dividing. You get x equals x, which is true also. So as soon as you see that, you're just gonna stop, say all real numbers, or the r with the two little lines down it. You know, if you saw it right here, you could stop right there. You don't need to keep going. So this is a review of Algebra 1 and solving for a single variable, with the two exceptions of when the variables cancel and you're left with a true statement, it's all real numbers, or if the variables cancel and you're left with a false statement, then you know it's no solution. So this was the introduction to section 1.2. Um, we still have um, some more information to cover in 1.2, and that'll be the 1.2b notes.